So we're talking about national sovereignty and the importance of it. And one of the examples that just popped up is the World Health Organization wanting to take over global health policy. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, let me just step back for 30 seconds. The, um, I code the bad guys, to make it simple for people to understand, I color code the bad guys, the reds, the greens, and the blues. The reds are the communist, authoritarian, socialist, uh, progressives who are actually regressive. They purposely use their wrong name. And the greens are the Islamists, uh, Muslim Brotherhood, Iran, uh, the reds, China, Russia. North Korea, um, and, and the blues, a color-coded uh, blue for the United Nations color. Uh, that's the blues, but it also includes major corporations, uh, tech corporations, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and, as, of course, uh, illegally suppressing freedom of speech. And it uh, includes the World Economic Forum and includes any world organization that you ever heard of, many of which are part of the United Nations like the World Health Organization that you uh, just cited. And, and the basic element of sovereignty is when I read the Constitution, it says that the president is commander-in-chief. It doesn't say he's commander-in-chief subject to the agreement of the United Nations or the World Economic Forum uh, or the World Health Organization uh, or the Muslim Brotherhood or, or, the, or communist dictatorships. So... Uh, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that every country has the inherent right of being sovereign. And by the way, you, you or me sitting in our house, we have the right to be sovereign. I can't just walk into your house and say, oh, I ran out of uh, 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 sterling silver uh, for, for a banquet. Can I just steal it? You know, no, hello, no. So, so just as we as individuals have sovereign rights, we as homeowners uh, or, or home, home livers have rights, so countries have rights, and I don't recognize the rights of any global organization. Oh, so if the World Health Organization says this is our policy, you have to obey it, doesn't matter who we elect or, or not elect, you, that's a violation of our sovereignty. Yes, and I, I would, now I, I, I don't mind if someone says I have a suggestion for you. I mean, we all have suggestions from time to time for many people. So I, I, I'm not objecting to the World Health Organization saying pretty please or, or but there, there should be no consequences to listening or not listening to anything they have to say. Well, and here's the thing is, it, it, to your point, if we can't vote for officials who have control over that policy rather than having subverted it and handed it over to someone else, then we've lost control of our lives. I mean, the, the World Health Organization, if I read this right, could, could shut everything down, make you stay in your home, uh, mandate that you take experimental vaccines, do all sorts of things. Uh, we can't allow that. And, and sovereignty is an important thing, and, and our elected officials ought to be protecting that sovereignty. That's right. It, and re remember, as it says in the Declaration of Independence, uh, our, the role of our government is to protect our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and I expect the government to do that, and I expect every government to do that. No question. And there are other examples. It's not just the health policy. There's the one world currency discussions, and there are all kinds of things. But I understand from you and reading from this history uh, that recognizing the sovereign rights of other people, that, that keeps you out of war. It, it allows you to live at peace, and it allows prosperity, success, and growth of the whole world. Yes, but if you look at the sorry state of history, uh, from the beginning, human beings have been fighting each other from when, whenever you think human beings began to be human beings. And so uh, that, that's what human beings do, whether they fight individually or as families, and then they grow up and they fight as cities, and then they fight as countries. So it's actually in, in our history that we do that. But you would think that after all of our history, we would have grown up so to speak, to, to the point where we respect each other as individuals, we respect them as families, we respect the houses, we respect the cities, the states, and the countries. And here we are after all these years and years and years of history, and we haven't learned a damn thing. 